Hey guys, Phil Baumhard here. So for today's Knife of the Week, I got this Torreon buoy that I forged from Leaf Spring. So for those of you who don't know, the uh, the Torreon buoy is just what I call any of my uh, my kind of S-Guard uh, buoy knives. So I've explained it in other videos, but uh, basically I just sort of uh, draw, I just sort of connect the Spanish influence of the S-Guard to the, uh, the Torreon tower uh, defensive structure that uh, the Spaniards built in the New World. Um, such as the one in Lincoln, New Mexico, that I happen to have visited. It just sort of uh, connects this knife back to uh, to the history that inspired me, and sort of ties it in as a uh, last-ditch self-defense weapon, which uh, is kind of what I design all these large knives to be. Obviously, any knife can be used for self-defense, but the bigger the better. So this would be a great camp knife or uh, hunting knife. So. Uh, with this particular one, this is forged from a, uh, an old rusty leaf spring, so all these uh, pit marks are from its past life as a spring. It's something that I found out in the woods, so it was very heavily uh, rusted. So uh, obviously from the forging, that rust is long gone, but a lot of those marks still remain. So it gives it a really unique uh, texture that uh, can't really be reproduced by hand, like you know, with a hammer doing the little... Uh, hammer marks and stuff like that, which I don't personally care for, but this kind of natural uh, pitting and distressing and just sort of the natural aging I think is pretty neat. So this does have a fully sharpened uh, false edge. Obviously the true edge is sharp as well. So the guard is actually forged from a large piece of uh, rebar, about one inch uh, thick rebar. And so I kind of left a little bit of the uh, that kind of, you know, the the ridges that are in the rebar there you can kind of make out about three of those on this side and a couple on this side as well I try to leave those in they're very faint and subtle so it's almost kind of like inherent decoration but um, it's a very broad guard uh, very thick and I've got my little uh, uh, brass collar there of course the uh, the walnut is handled this is a real nice piece of uh, a walnut there's a little bit of uh, tiger striping kind of in there which is neat for the blade. I forged the preform entirely from the uh, from the square spring, so kind of forged it down to that um, that triangular shape, and then for and then uh, put in the edge bevels, which gave it that kind of sweep backwards. Uh, kind of reminds me of like a uh, an old buck knife as far as the blade profile is uh, concerned. So I thought that was kind of neat. But uh, yeah, rather than just uh, what I've done with uh, some of my bar stock. It, Instead of cutting it down and then just forging, doing some light hammering to give it the shape, I completely forged the preform. So that was my first time doing that for a Bowie knife, so kind of proud of that. And so the it's got a narrow tang as well, and this is one solid piece of wood. So there's no, there's no, usually, usually on these type of knives, I've got two pieces of uh, handle scales that I have epoxy together. This is just one piece of wood that, that I uh, drilled out, and then I fit the tang into the narrow tang so again a little more in keeping with the uh, you know the way that historic Bowie knives would have been forged so but uh, the handles uh, again very robust very big but it's it's all rounded off so very comfortable kind of hand filling uh, feel so you can you can choke back here if you need to do um, you know it's kind of more chopping type tasks you get extra leverage here and there's a nice little finger groove in there so you can snug up right up against the guard more of kind of a uh, fighting grip and so for our blade length it's about 11 inches uh, overall maybe 10 and a half uh, 10 and a half inches of uh, cutting edge and then the uh, overall length is 18 inches and the handle were just just under 7 inch long handle and the sheaths, like all my sheaths, has got the, the birch oil uh, stand on there for that uh, unique kind of dark brown. Burnished edges, bank line uh, stitching. This has got a pretty good fit. And so, uh, yeah, even even without the, um, the retention on there, it's actually fitting pretty snugly. So this is that kind of uh, belt loop uh, system where I've got the belt loop and then the retention is all uh, attached as one uh, piece of leather. Was that kind of big uh, frog stud there? You can see that. This one is crossing over the the front of the guard, and so it's very easy to get off. A little slower to get on, but you just grab it and pull on it, and it'll uh, come right off. And it kind of because it's one integral piece of leather, kind of holds that out of the way. So if you don't want to use that, you can kind of sheath and draw it without it uh, being in the way. So it's a system that I do like. 
and that thing overall looks nice and and uh, you know gives it a good historic flavor which I like in all my knives so if you're interested in owning this particular knife uh, I'll have a link in the description box to the uh, to the Etsy web store where you can purchase this or look at some of my other knives if you're interested in seeing what else is available if there's something uh, unique and custom you want me to make for you uh, send me an email through Facebook or Instagram or message me directly through Etsy and we'll see if we can uh, make something up for you so I hope you guys enjoyed this little video and uh, I hope you're enjoying the uh, the knife of the week series where you just sort of uh, get to see what I've been working on you can also follow me on uh, Facebook and Instagram uh, where I'll post pictures of my latest and greatest work so you can keep up with me there as well but as always I appreciate the support thanks for watching and until next time be more Viking.